It scares me that I couldn't see Eddie Fisher for what he was. I only saw him as someone I was supposed to look up to. Someone I was supposed to trust. Premiering on the Stars Network is What Haunts Us, the hard-hitting documentary about boys being molested in a private school and a community doing nothing about it. And 30 years later, they are paying the price. And joining me right now is filmmaker Paige Goldberg-Tolmach to discuss her new film. Paige, greetings from Las Vegas. Hi, Jeff. Now, Paige, you must have had so many challenges making this documentary, and the one that comes to mind right away is... How do you get people to talk about this, uh, let alone in private, but on camera? What were the challenges for that? You know, it's interesting. It took me, it took me six years to make this movie, and about the first three of them was me making phone calls, talking to people, forming good relationships with them, so they, they, they trusted me. So they knew that I was going to run off and do something horrible with this story, that I really had good intentions. and. Um, and I wanted to forge really close relationships with these, with these amazing people who were brave enough to tell me their stories. I mean, they're some of the closest people in my life right now, and I'm grateful to them. So, so it, it was hard. And, and then there were many more, many more people who didn't want to talk about it at all. So, so that was a huge challenge as well. I mean, you know, a lot of, couple of hang-ups and a, how dare you, in my, how dare you bring this up in my face. So there was that. So things like that. Now, Paige, you went to school with a lot of these boys, so when you were doing this documentary, was there one particular story that stood out among the rest? Was there one that really surprised you? Well, they all surprised me because they were all the same. That was what was so shocking. I mean, I watched um, hours and hours and hours of vintage tape. I had like 72 hours of vintage interviews, um, which is part of what helped me make this film. Um, and, and I looked at these, these now men who were younger men then, um, when they did the interviews, all tell the story about how this man had groomed them, how Eddie Fisher had come into their lives and charmed them. And it was always the same story. And I was blown away. And every time I saw another interview, I would just see my little boy's face in theirs. And I just would sob. I mean, I just sobbed and sobbed and thought, my God, how was this allowed to happen? It broke my heart. Now, you come from this really small town where this happened. It's like almost a Mayberry kind of attitude where everybody trusts each other. Yep, right. Well, people knew, people knew something funny was going on, but no one did anything about it. I mean, you know, the administration certainly knew what was happening. Um, they, you know, when a, when, a, when a teacher shows up at school with a young boy in his car early in the morning, that should be a red flag to people. And knowing that boys go over to a teacher's house or any kids go over to a teacher's house at night and drink and possibly do drugs, those are, those are beyond red flags. Those are actually criminal activities. So the fact that nobody was really paying attention or doing anything about it was a really, really sad thing because the institution was valued over the individual. And look what happened. Look what it did. I'm pretty confident the large majority of the victims in our town have never come forward in any way. They've never reported to authorities. They've never sought any type of mental health treatment. They may not have even told their spouses about what happened to them. Now, Paige, when I went to high school, I remember a particular teacher who had students over at her house on the weekend, you know, so there was a lot of open secrets back in the 1980s when I went to high school. But I had real strict parents. So some, sometimes I kind of think in the back of my mind, parents are kind of responsible for knowing where their children are. I mean, I wasn't allowed to do anything or go anywhere, had to be home at night, whose house you're going to. They took a lot of effort to, to keep track of me. So I'm thinking that, you know, parents need to watch their children. I agree, but I don't think parents always had that kind of control over, over their kids. I mean, um, one of the characters in my film said his mom was very attuned to this, and she said, I don't want you going over to his house. And his response was, Mom, I know what I'm doing. And then he got molested, and he was embarrassed to tell his mother that she was right. So sometimes parents are really on it, but it doesn't mean it's always going to take care of it. You do trust an administration to hire the best and the brightest. You trust them that when they know something's going on to take immediate action. My school didn't do anything. And they allowed this man to thrive. And when it was too much to take, they just passed him on to another school where he continued to molest young boys. So, so it just got worse and worse and worse. And, um, and I, you know, it's ha it, ha it continues to happen today. 
Now, Paige, this is your first film. You're a first-time filmmaker. So tell me about that moment where you said to yourself, I got to pick up a camera. I have to tell this story. I, you know, it, I, I, I think I was just doing this investigation. I was writing down furiously no, all these notes and, and I kept like uncovering each layer. It was like peeling an onion back, like more and more and more layers of the story. And I was like, wait a minute. I am so privileged that I get to learn all of this. I get to know this. The rest of this, my classmates should know this. My school should know this. Everybody who went to Porter Gout, they deserve to know the true story of what happened. Um, and while I'm on it, the rest of the world gets to know what happened because it's very possible it's happening in your school too. I mean, I think it's really interesting that you just said to me, you remember this teacher who kids were going over to his house at night. Of course you do, because it happens everywhere all the time. And this story is not an original one. It didn't just happen at Porter God School in Charleston, South Carolina in the 80s. It's happening right now as we're having this interview. So it's up to us as adults to protect our children and to be aware of the fact that this happens and, and we need to empower our children and be you know loud voices for them and stand up for them. Now this being your first film page, you couldn't get better luck than working with the great Frank Marshall. This is his new documentary film division. So tell me about working with him. Oh my gosh, it was exciting. Um, my, this, the, my executive producers are Frank Marshall and my husband, Matt Tolmack, who are both uh, filmmakers here in Los Angeles. And um, Frank's the best. He's just the greatest guy ever. And I feel so lucky to have had both of those amazing producers on my movie. Not, you know, I, like I said, I, I, I do live with one of them who really didn't want to talk to me about it that much. <laughs> he would say, okay, let's stop talking about your movie and actually talk about our child for a second. But, um, but it was extraordinary to have both of them really just be the steady hands when I needed it. I mean, they, they were amazing and they're, they were amazing. Paige, congratulations on this documentary. It's, it's really difficult to watch, but it's a phenomenal effort. Thank you so much for your courage and uh, congratulations on the film. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Make sure you come visit us in Las Vegas soon. We'd love to have you. I will. Okay. <laughs> you can catch the documentary What Haunts Us on the Stars Network. And for more reviews and interviews, surf on over to my website at VegasFilmCritic.com. I'm Jeffrey K. Howard in Las Vegas. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you next time.